welcome to scalpels and sutures the official youtube channel of the department of general and minimal access surgery at gmc patiala this series is dedicated to simplifying clinical examinations in general surgery through clear step by step tutorials whether you are an mbba student or a post graduate our experienced faculty is here to guide you beyond your textbooks building your confidence and clinical skills if you have been watched the first video in this series history taking simplified we highly recommend checking it out the link is in the description below join us as we transform complex concepts into practical knowledge you can apply directly in your medical journey welcome to today's session pain is the body's alarm but are you really hearing what it's saying in the next few minutes we will show you how surgeons decode pain to uncover the real diagnosis before it's too late pain speaks a language of its own and in surgery we are its translators in this session we will cover how pinpointing the site of pain why why where does it hurt is the million dollar question why timing of pain matters more than you think how the nature of pain the language of sensations whether burning colicky stabbing provides diagnostic clues how pain can travel pain journeys radiating referred or migrating and why they matters subtle findings that change the game pain is a symptom not a diagnosis remember pain by itself is not a diagnosis it's a symptom a messenger but ignoring pain that's often a recipe for disaster patients speak in stories our job is to translate their symptoms into clinical signs and eventually into a working diagnosis types of pain pain comes in many forms superficial pain is sharp and localized affecting only the skin or surface tissue it is usually easy to pinpoint segmental pain travels along a specific dermatome which is an area of the skin supplied by a single spinal nerve this type of pain can radiate or move along the nerve pathway deep or visceral pain is dull and vague often harder to locate precisely it originates from internal organs and is frequently referred to other areas of the body making diagnosis challenging psychogenic pain psychogenic pain originates in the brain it can mimic any other pain type it's often associated with emotional distress hysteria or certain neurological lesions the key point is although its source is psychological the pain for the patient is real taking a pain history taking a thorough pain history is essential and involves asking detailed questions this careful inquiry helps build a complete clinical picture to guide accurate diagnosis and management this emphasizes the comprehensive and systematic approach to pain history taking crucial in surgical practice what to ask to a patient presenting with pain where did the pain start when did it begin how has it progressed over time what makes it worse or better and are there any accompanying symptoms site of pain first location ask the patient to point to the exact site of pain with their fingertip even if the pain has shifted the starting point is crucial to diagnosis the key question should be where did the pain start for example meena a 28 year old says pain started near her umbilicus and later moved to the right lower abdomen that classic migration then think about acute appendicitis onset the timing of onset can be diagnostic sudden pain often due to acute events like perforation or obstruction gradual onset more likely chronic or inflammatory pathology always ask how did it start this is often the most neglected 
yet most revealing question. It started just now after eating fatty food. Fat like someone punched my upper abdomen. Most probably biliary colic. Severity Pain is personal and is subjective. But don't be fooled. Severe pain may be due to a minor issue while a major pathology can sometimes present with surprisingly mild pain. Rather than using pain scale, standard textbook says you should ask these questions to the patients. Did it stop you going to work? Did it make you to go to bed? Did you use any analgesia? Did you have to call your doctors? Did it wake you up at night? Or stop you going to sleep? Was the pain better lying still? Or did it make you roll around? Remember, it's not just the intensity of pain, but its impact on daily life that truly matters. Nature of pain Patient words matters. Burning pain Seen in ulcers or acid reflex because acid irritates the lining. Almost everyone experienced a burning sensation, like burning in skin, stabbing pain from perforation or myocardial infarction due to sudden tissue injury, which is sudden, sharp and shortly, throbbing pain as blood flow pulses with swelling, like a toothache, shooting pain from nerve root irritation like sciatica, pain travels along the nerve. Twisting pain in torsion or volvulus when tissue twist and blood supply is cut off. Constriction pain in angina when the heart muscles get reduced blood flow. It encircles the relevant part and compresses it from all directions. Colicky pain in kidney or intestinal problems when muscles contract against blockage. It goes like sine wave. It feels like migrating constriction in the wall of a hollow tube that is attempting to force the contents of the tube forwards. The time gap between episodes of abdominal colic is shortest in upper small bowel obstruction and longest in large bowel obstruction, with the intervals increasing as the site moves lower in the bowel. In other words, colic occurs most frequently in upper small bowel obstruction and least frequently in large bowel obstruction. The sensation often reflects the underlying mechanism. Sometimes patients can have just a pain. In such cases, do not ask much questions to make them try to fit their description into your suggestions, which may be misleading. Pain Progression Patterns Observe how pain changes. Gradual rise and fall suggest inflammatory conditions. Sudden constant pain Think about ischemia or rupture. Pain that comes in waves. Fluctuating. Classic for colic. Each pattern tells its own story. Pain patterns can be begin in maximum intensity and remain at this level or may increase steadily until it reaches a plateau or may disappear completely between each episode. Pain movement. Pain can radiate travel along the same nerve, like in acute pancreatitis, epigastric pain radiating to back. It can be referred also, felt far from the source, due to shared nerve pathways, seen in perforated duodenal ulcers. Referred pain can be felt in the tip of the shoulder due to diaphragmatic irritation. Pain can migrate too. It changes its location entirely, like an appendicitis. Aggravating and relieving factors. Certain recognizable patterns in pain behavior helps in diagnosis and management. Pain occurring after eating may suggest ulcers or cholecystitis, while pain relieved by antacids typically indicates peptic ulcers. Pain that worsens with movement points to conditions like appendicitis or peritonitis. Relief by sitting forward often occurs in pancreatitis, as this position reduces pressure on inflamed tissues. Passing gas can relieve pain caused by intestinal obstruction by reducing bubble distension. 
Understanding these aggravating and relieving factors provides important clinical clues for pinpointing the underlying cause of pain. Pain is the body's alarm. It's up to us to understand its language. Listen carefully, think systematically, and you will find the diagnosis waiting to be uncovered. Stay tuned for the second part of the series where we will explore the examination of pain. Take a quadrant by quadrant diagnostic tour. Discuss the causes of abdominal pain and highlight key physical signs. Thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you in our next surgical teaching session.